So we're starting out with two eggs. Which we're going to be first. And once it's well beaten, we are going to go ahead and add a cup of flour. So we'll start with a third of a cup. So you can see the how it looks. So you just add it a little bit at a time. And I actually like doing this with rice flour rather than wheat flour because the lack of gluten makes it easier to make it with rice flour. You're not seeing why yet, but in a minute when I start trying to roll this out, when you do it with regular flour, like you roll it out and it goes ping. <laughs> like, because gluten makes things really stretchy and so it, it'll keep. So if you're using regular flour for this, it's going to keep springing back on you. Whereas when you use the rice flour, there's no gluten in it, so it doesn't do that. You roll it out and it stays put. So it's very convenient for you. And then towards the end, you start doing it, you know, you add it a little bit slower because you see how it's getting to be more solid. So this is kind of like if you bake bread, you know, you start with all your liquids and then you add your flour because it's just easier to do it that way. It works better to be able to get the right consistency. So you can pat it initially to get it and then keep flipping. And then it just depends on how thick you like your noodles. If you like your noodles really thin, just keep rolling to make them really thin. If you like them thicker and more hearty, then stop rolling earlier so that they'll be thicker and more hearty. Um, so I like mine fairly thick. So that's where we are, where I'm gonna stick with this. So normally I use a pizza cutter for this. The pizza cutter works really well. You just go shh, 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 shh. And it cuts it really nicely with the rolling thing. Um, but unfortunately their pizza cutter disappeared. Well, we'll, we'll try. We'll see what happens. I thought making noodles was actually really hard. I know, everybody thinks that this <laughs> stuff is really hard and it's I not. Know. I thought it was the hardest thing ever. Right, like, yeah. So this works pretty well without the, I think if you, you know, if you're using the um, regular flour, I think the pizza cutter is more important. This is working way better than what I remember um, trying to do it without a pizza cutter. So, and then also you can have your noodles as long as you want. Well, maybe not because sometimes they break. <laughs> Um, or if you want them short, you can make them short too. Uh, we are gonna let these dry for a little bit. Um, so this is an easy thing to make ahead of time. You know, like if you're gonna cook layers, so like the instructions say let it dry for an hour if you have time. Otherwise, just cook them right away. Um, and right now, I'm waiting for the water to boil a little bit. So I wanna make sure the water is hot enough. Yeah, you notice in the instructions too, I give another shout out for stew hens <laughs> because they make the best broth. And it really is the stew hens make the best broth because 
Um, they have more fat on them than roosters. Roosters, old roosters do not have much fat on them. So, all right. So, I'm gonna go ahead and start dropping these in there. So this may be a little weird meal, you know, you're gonna have noodles and quiche and creme brulee pie. <laughs> but I think you're gonna be full when you leave. <laughs> Low and slow over, yeah, low and slow. Okay. You cook it in water, so um, so you're stewing it. So a crock pot is good. And basically the older they are, the longer you have to cook them. So, you know, if they're only a couple years old, um, you would cook them for two or three hours, but if they're like four or five years old, you may have to cook them all afternoon. Basically, you cook them until um, you can pull the meat off the bone. So I'm always sticking my fork in there, and in the beginning, it's gonna be like you're trying to stab shoe leather. And then, like at some point, you're gonna stick it in there, and the meat's just gonna fall off the bone, and so you know you're good. So I'm just kind of breaking them up into about like little four inch pieces. A bigger pot would have been good too, but. So there we go. Any questions on that one? How long do you boil those for? Um, about 10 minutes. Not even. Well, I'm one of them doing chicken broth, uh, chicken soup or turkey soup. So I'm going to use that broth. Um, but I also use the casseroles. Um, you know, like a tuckazini or something like that. And so whatever. If you've got whatever broth it is that you're cooking, like you do turkey tetrazzini after um, Thanksgiving for a leftover, because it's really easy to just chop up, chop up the meat from the turkey, and then um, I'm gonna add some butter to those so they don't boil over. We've had other um, students before. I know Josh had them before, yeah. And we did get a few complaints about people not, I think because they didn't know how to cook up, it makes sense now, but we did have a few people that were like, I don't think I'm going to get those again. <laughs> but I know, we've seen, I've seen them on the show. No, it's really sad if people don't know what they are and they don't know how to cook them, mm -hmm. because it's like, you know, it's kind of like giving somebody caviar and, <laughs> and they have no appreciation for it. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing with the students, so. And you have to find cookbooks, really like 1970s and earlier, to find recipes for how to cook them. I don't think anything, like Julia Child's 1980 cookbook is probably the latest one where I even saw a mention of a stew hen. And she tells you that to make broth, you really, to make really good broth, you need a, you really need a stew hen. And then that's where she gets all sad about how you can't find stew hens anymore. But since you can't find stew hens, well, you're just gonna have to do it, you know, with one of those young chickens from the store. And so she gives you the second best alternative. So then just for the, because we're doing this in class, um, I'll just salt that a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add some more butter. No, I'm only doing this because we're just doing the noodles. So, um, so 
So normally I would just throw them into my soup pot. Or if I was gonna use them in a casserole, um, then I would strain them and just automatically throw them right into the casserole. But I just throw them back into the pot here for serving and then also to add the salt and the um, butter. Too, since this is so plain, is just put some, put some parmesan on 